Google announced a reduction of 30,000 jobs in late 2023 driven by restructuring efforts and cost-cutting measures. Meta, Microsoft and Intel also executed large-scale layoffs with AI automation playing a crucial role in reducing the need for human labor. But we had food for 18 billion people, still 30% of the population is hungry, they have not eaten properly. So this is not because of resource, this is because there is no care and concern in our hearts. For example, when pandemic came, all our activity came to standstill because all our activity is mass, you know, people gathering. So we couldn't do that for over two and a half years. So, uh, largely we are a volunteer-run organization, but where certain talent is needed, we have many hired people. So, the only way was to relieve them because the foundation was sitting there without any revenue. So, first thing I did was, I curtailed the food of all our people, including myself. <laughs> so, Guruji, coming to this, I personally have reached a stage where uh, I love most of what I do and I feel very grateful to be in this place. However, I still... Uh, I still wonder what's right. So, if I can give you an example, let's say my my mother's here, so I'm just going to use her as an example. Let's say I have a really important board meeting that I'm chairing tomorrow, and it also happens to be my mom's birthday. Now, the decisions that I make for the company obviously affect so many other people who are working in the company, uh, but it's also my mom's birthday tomorrow, and I want to be there for her. Let's say I can only do one. You can take her to the boardroom and celebrate along with that. <laughs> I would love to do. I, I'm going to do that. Thank you. That, that that would be great. But what I'm trying to get at is when, when things like that come up, what is the right, what is the right thing to do, or is there nothing right and wrong, and it just depends from situation to situation. Uh, this is something that I really struggle with. I think this is what I meant by personal and professional. See, when we say personal life, whether it's our parents or our children or whatever. It is not the volume of time that we spend with them, it's about how we spend that time with them. So, I've raised my daughter with my little finger of involvement only, but she thinks I've been a fantastic parent to her, all right? That's her experience and that's all that matters. I know I only let my little finger involve myself with her because rest of it was all involved with my work. But with little finger you can do a lot. It is the quality of what you do, it's not about how much you do. Wow. We have to raise that quality. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I think it's becoming quite commonplace, in, especially in Gen Z, to do more than just... Hey, what do you mean, Gen Z, you are the last generation? <laughs> Sorry, Guruji, it's just a word that I've gotten off. I know my sister is part of the Gen Z and she's... No, I know, I know what that means, but what I'm saying is, when we say A of life, we mean beginning of life. When we say Z of life, we mean end of life. When you say I'm Gen Z, it's not sounding good to me. <laughs> that's actually... if you think about it like that, it's actually quite unfortunate. Hopefully they're not the last generation <laughs> So. I've personally noticed that we tend to do more than just one thing. Um, and given that I'm trying to balance a career in both business and music, is this something that you think is sustainable or should we as individuals be focusing and giving our all to just one field? See, uh, whether I can ride two horses at a time or one horse at a time is a question of my competence, isn't it? If I can effectively do it, you can ride ten, what's the problem? But if you're going to fall between the horses, better ride one. That's something you must make a decision, it's not about right and wrong. It's a question of you invest your life and time and energy into something. How effective and impactful will you be? Because when we do activity, whatever the nature of our activity, I'm asking you a simple question. Suppose you make music, do you want to make music that nobody wants to listen to? Um, I would love to idly make music for myself. No, no, don't get all so complicated. I'm asking you a simple question. If you make music, 
do you want to make music nobody including yourself want to listen to no, it no no you want people to listen to it when they listen to your music if they sit here with tears in their eyes that's a day your music huh isn't it do you want to write a book that nobody wants to read do you want to make a movie nobody wants to see do you want to cook something nobody wants to eat no so essentially you must understand human activity is relevant only in terms of the impact that it causes so if you can be impactful doing 10 things great if you cannot be choose what's your competence right thank you guruji that that personally really helped me i hope some of you, i hope this was relevant for some of you there are not many musicians out here it's okay <laughs> so you know given there's this elephant in the room uh, and many who is that guy <laughs> you talking to me <laughs> <laughs> given all the biking and everything i think you're a huge inspiration for all our fitness levels um given the corporate conditions uh you know many people are being asked to leave their workplace and this is as a young business person uh, leave means fired uh yes due to laid off yes due due to uh, not due to incompetence but due to the fact that mm -hmm. costs need to be cut to meet the needs of uh, the company's changing problem. changing situations absolutely um now in a situation like this of course as a as a young business person it it really hurts to see that you know you're affecting the livelihoods of please fire some more people i'm looking for uh, attrition <laughs> I can give a lot of work no payment but lot of work <laughs> We are a volunteer organization you know we are always looking for people who are willing to work for nothing No I think everyone seems very happy and that's the end goal so that it's lovely but how do we it's it's a battle between the heart and the mind uh and it's a it's a moral for me personally it's a moral issue um so how do we reduce this conflict which is good for all versus good for majority see uh, there are many changing situations always there are you said uh, i mean we got into a different uh, tangent on that you said right now this generation is facing so many things i am telling you you are facing the least number of challenges if you ask me because never before humanity had this level of comfort convenience technological empowerment never before in the history of humanity were human beings ever this comfortable and this much convenience so you should never complain this generation what shall i call you s that means if you use that only 26 alphabets are there let's call you whatever 100x <laughs> all right because numbers are limitless if you go by alphabet somewhere it has to end So never before these kind of comforts and conveniences ever been there for human beings never before food and survival has been this well organized and fortunately still there are many people in the world you know there are famines in the world there are droughts in the world unfortunately it's there that is not because of lack of resource not because of lack of food in 20 in 20 uh 12 i think in 2012 the study shows that on that in that year we were producing food enough food for 18 billion people on the planet but we were only seven something at that time but we had food for 18 billion people still 30% of the population is hungry they have not eaten properly so this is not because of resource this is because there is no care and concern in our hearts we we have not felt for other human beings now i'm glad at least you're feeling something i'm glad about that that it hurts you to know that somebody is going to be troubled in their life it's very good your humanity is alive please keep it that way if you just think you know there is somebody who wrote a book you're fired i don't know who you don't know <laughs> so it's not fun to throw somebody out if if we have to re re relieve somebody we'll have to do it because there's a picture of a larger well being 
but you should not enjoy those things. That shows you're lacking humanity. Hello? Suppose I have to put you into some little bit of trouble, at least I must have some trepidation that unfortunately I have to do this. I enjoy it. This is sickness. Yes or no? Sometimes we are forced to do certain things. Because world is not all properly balanced like this, it's never been and never will be. S many times we are at advantage, somebody is at disadvantage, at least you must have some feeling. Even though, even though you can't fix it, many times you can't fix it, at least your heart should breathe a little bit. If that stops, you have forsaken your humanity, please don't do that. It's all right, you, you fire hundred people today and you go suffer tonight, Please do that, it's good. It's good for you because deepening your sense of humanity will come a long way in your life, in many, many ways. But there are ways to settle this, for example, I mean, my example may not go well with your kind of business, but anyway, I'm telling you. For example, when pandemic came, all our activity came to standstill because all our activity is mass, you know, people gathering. So we couldn't do that for over two and a half years. So uh, largely we are a volunteer-run organization, but other kinds of, uh, you know, labor and there are other things which are hired labor and also there are accountants and this and that which are where certain talent is needed, we have many hired people. So the only way was to relieve them because the foundation was sitting there without any revenue. So first thing I did was, I curtailed the food of all our people, including myself. I said, let's eat far more simple than what… we eat only two meals a day. In that, I simplified because at that time, nobody knew how long it'll last. There were predictions, it will last for three years, five years, like this. So if it happens for five years, where will you go begging for food? Because I have over five thousand people living with me, this is my family, live close family, you know. This is our nuclear family, five thousand <laughs> So, these five thousand people have to be fed, it doesn't matter what happens to the foundation. So, first thing is we simplified the food. And uh, next thing is uh, we told everybody, please, we will have to relieve at least thirty percent of the staff. We don't want to do that. Instead of that, everybody take thirty percent cut in your salary. We will make it up when things pick up. Everybody willingly took that cut, so we never fired anybody, we never relieved even a single person, but everybody went down to… their salaries were cut by thirty percent. I'm saying there are ways to negotiate situations rather than simply blatantly doing things. That will happen anyway, if it hurts you a little bit, you look for a solution. Not always the same solution, there may be different solutions. It's a great insight for all of us here to find some sort of middle ground so that, you know, things will... The job crisis in 2024 has been marked by a significant increase in mass layoffs across various industries worldwide. Several factors are contributing to this crisis including economic downturns, technological advancements and sector-specific challenges. Here are detailed examination of the top few countries most affected by mass layoffs and the specific reasons driving these trends. United States The United States has experienced substantial layoffs particularly in the technology industry where companies are downsizing in response to economic challenges and the adoption of AI. Google announced a reduction of 30,000 jobs in late 2023 driven by restructuring efforts and cost-cutting measures. Meta, Microsoft and Intel also executed large-scale layoffs with AI automation playing a crucial role in reducing the need for human labor. Automotive industry the automotive sector has also been affected with General Motors and Ford announcing job cuts. These layoffs are primarily due to the transition to electric vehicles and the restructuring required to meet new technological demands. Financial Services The financial sector has not been spared with companies like Wells Fargo and State Street Corp implementing significant layoffs to adjust to the challenging economic environment and the need for digital transformation. India EdTech and Technology Sectors India has seen mass layoffs in the technology and educational sectors. Baiju's, a leading EdTech company, laid off 5,000 employees as it restructured to address financial challenges and adapt to changing market conditions. Paytm, another major tech firm, also reduced its workforce by 1,000 employees as part of its cost-cutting measures. Broader Impact 
The layoffs in India are part of a broader trend where tech companies are recalibrating their operations in response to global economic pressures and the increasing role of automation. United Kingdom Manufacturing and Finance The UK has faced significant layoffs across various sectors. British Steel announced the loss of 2,000 jobs due to challenges in the steel industry including rising energy costs and global competition. In the financial sector, Deloitte UK laid off 800 employees as it sought to streamline its operations amidst economic uncertainty. Retail sector The retail sector has also been impacted with companies like Wilco announcing large-scale layoffs as part of their restructuring efforts due to declining sales and the shift towards online shopping. Key factors driving the job crisis Economic uncertainty High interest rates and inflation have made borrowing more expensive, leading companies to cut costs through layoffs. This trend is particularly evident in in sectors like technology, where companies that rely heavily on venture capital and stock market performance are struggling to maintain profitability. Technological advancements The rise of AI and automation has accelerated job cuts, particularly in roles that are easily automated. Companies are increasingly relying on AI to perform tasks traditionally handled by humans, leading to significant workforce reductions. The 2024 job crisis is a reflection of the broader economic and technological shifts occurring globally with companies across various industries making different decisions to adapt to a rapidly changing environment.